Hi, yoga teachers. My name is Allison Russell, and I'm a consultant for yoga teachers and a yoga teacher trainer. And my job or my goal is to help you create a memorable class experience so you can build your yoga community and create the yoga business of your dreams. Today, we're going to talk about your yoga teacher toolbox part two, opening a class. Now, Last week, we talked about setting the scene for your yoga class because that's super important. Before you even teach, you want to make sure that the energy is really good in the classroom, that your presence is on point, um, and that all of the, that, your, that the room is clean. And you also want to make sure that uh, you start your class on time. Now, next, how do you start your class? Whew, there's lots of options here. First, I always suggest that you start your class with a greeting, an introduction. You want to let people know who you are. If you want people to refer you to their friends, if you want people to build connection with you, they got to know your name. So start every class with your name. I know it seems really simple, but this is a huge factor in helping your students build know, like, and trust with you. As yoga teachers, we're wanting our students to know us, we want our students to like us, and we want our students to trust us. Because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And knowing your name is the first part of that whole sequence. So introduce yourself. Let them know who you are. You don't have to give like this whole, you know, eight minute introduction to you. Just your name is fine. Whenever I'm subbing a class, I definitely make sure that maybe I give a little bit more about a little bit more info about myself. Hi, I'm Allison Russell. I'm subbing for so and so. Um, I also teach at this time, or I've been teaching here for how many years? I'm really excited to see you guys. So make sure that you give a little brief introduction to yourself. Next, also give a little introduction to the class. You want people to know what they should expect. Now, sometimes this could be where you set the intention for the class. So you may say, um, today we're gonna be doing a, a feet and legs class, or we're gonna be really working on heart opening. We're gonna be really trying to find balance between yin and yang in our class today. Whatever it is, maybe you wanna tell them the theme right now, or you could do it in, a little bit once you actually start class. I think it's really important that you let people know what type of class this is. So if they're in a power class, you need to remind them, hey guys, this is gonna be a power class. We're going to do power for about 45 minutes and then the last 15 minutes we'll save that for our um, rest and relaxation or some, for some really good stretches. Tell them what type of class to expect so they know how hard they have to work. Whenever I go into a class, if someone says, you know what, we're gonna do about 30 minutes of power and 30 minutes of deep stretches, I know I'm gonna give it my all for those 30 minutes. And then I get to be rewarded with some nice stretching at the end. Now, if you tell me I'm only gonna have to work for 30 minutes and then we end up working really hard for 45 minutes, I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> I gave you 30 minutes of my time. I gave you 30 minutes of this really hard effort. So stick to your word. Whatever you tell them, stick to that. You also could do this the opposite way. All right, guys, we're gonna start nice and easy today, and then we're gonna really build up into some power for about 20, 30 minutes, and then we'll take it back down. So I have an expectation of what that class is going to entail so I can prepare my own energy for that class. So make sure that you tell the class what to expect. Maybe you want to also include the theme here, or you can do it in just a moment. All right, so you've introduced yourself, you've introduced the class, and you've set some of the expectations. Now, this gets into the best part is actually starting. How do you actually want to start that class? In what position? There's lots of different ways that we can start a class. 
We can start a class in a mountain pose. We can start a class in a seated position. We can start a class in a child's pose, or we can start a class in a Shavasana. I'm sure there's some other ways out there, so if you know them, please make sure that you share them with me. But I want to really focus on these four today. The way that you start a class sets the energy and the tone for the class. Sometimes, or often, now that I've been teaching for a while, I start my class based on the energy in the room. So if I walk into a class and everyone is standing and they're all chit-chatting and it seems like a really high energy for that day, then I'm going to start us in mountain and I'm going to work with the energy that they brought in with them. But I've also walked into classes before where everyone is laying down on the ground and like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And I can just feel that the energy is a little bit more relaxed. So I'm going to start us on our backs, or I'm going to start us in a seated position. I'm going to start us slower so we can build into some more maybe power if we need to do that. So your starting position is going to be very important for your class. If you're a new yoga teacher and you can't really feel the energy of the room or you want to make sure that you have a good game plan going in, that's also perfectly fine. Do that. That's A-OK. -okay. You don't always have to read the energy of the room. It's something that will intuitively come to you as you continue your yoga teaching journey. But remember, you can start a, you can start a class in a mountain pose in a child's pose, in a seated position, or on the back. Now, benefits of a mountain pose. These include, or the main benefit of a mountain pose is that everyone can do it. Everyone can come in and stand. Now, obviously, if you are in a, like a senior class where, you, where not everyone can stand, or in an adapted class where not everyone can stand, then that's going to be a little different. But in most of the classes I personally teach, everyone can stand and we can really work on that posture. So mountain pose is a great place to stand, really brings the energy up for the class. Second, you could start in a seated position. Not everyone can start in a seated position though. Keep that in mind. Some people are going to have really tight hips or knees, and it may be really difficult for them to start seated. Maybe their back is really tight. They may, may not be able to sit on the ground. And so keep that in mind that not everyone can start seated comfortably. You could also start in a child's position. And remember, this is very similar to that seated pose. Not everyone likes child's pose. I find as yoga teachers, we're often like, oh, child's pose feels great. But not everyone shares that same sentiment. For a lot of people, it can really hurt their knees. Or maybe reaching their arms out in front is too tight for their shoulders. Maybe it's too much for the hips. You know your class better than anyone else. And so child's pose is a wonderful place to start, but not everyone else can do it. So just keep that in mind as well. Last, we can start on our backs in a Shavasana. And this is a really nice way to start because we can immediately go into core work, um, or I, I really like it. I guess I really like to go into core work from here. <laughs> uh, so starting on our backs is another option. Most people can start on their backs. Often, I find some, a lot of people will need to bring their feet to the ground with their knees bent when first starting because their backs are feeling pretty tight. Um, so you may want to keep that in mind, but for the most part, a lot of people can start on their backs. So either of these four positions are appropriate. Mountain, seated, child, or Shavasana is a great way to, to start the class. Each one has a little different um, energy about it. So a mountain pose is going to be very energizing. Seated is going to be, um, or Shavasana will be the least energizing. And then seated and child's pose, those are kind of somewhere in the middle. So maybe just gauge your class and see how they are. 
One last thing about child's pose. If you're a new teacher, child's pose is a great place to start your class. It can be really intimidating for everyone to, to walk into the yoga room and everyone's staring at you. That can be really scary for a new teacher. So it's great to say, okay, everyone, we're gonna start in a child's pose today. Let them come into child's pose and suddenly no one is looking at you. Oh, you can take your deep breaths, you can center yourself, whatever you need to do. Okay, now we can start. Either of these poses are gonna be great. Each has a different intention and a different energy about it. So just be mindful and intentional when choosing the pose that's gonna start your class. So let me know how you like to start your classes. Do you like to start? Which position do you like to start in? Once we get started in our class and we get them into the right position, make sure you do some centering work. Usually this is gonna be based around breath. I'm never just in a pose. I'm not just like, okay, mountain pose, everyone. All right, warrior one. <laughs> I make sure that we center the class. We bring the energy together. Most of the time we start with breath, just focused inhales and exhales. I like to invite the class to close their eyes if it's appropriate for them. So they can start to bring the awareness and the energy internally. So whenever you start your class, choose the right position. Start with some breath work. This is a great time to bring in any mudras that you like as well. And bring awareness to the internal, to that place inside. Invite your students to leave their, the rest of their day at the door. Whenever they walk into the yoga classroom, this is the time for them. So let me know how you like to start your yoga classes. And if you feel like you've been starting the same way for a long time, maybe it's time to mix it up a little bit and try something new. Share your favorite way to start your yoga class in the comments below, or feel free to tag me. Maybe take a picture of your favorite way to start a yoga class and tag me on Instagram or Facebook at Allison Russell or hashtag Allison Russell Training. Thanks so much, you guys. Enjoy your yoga classes this week.